Hello everyone, hope you're doing good. My name is Saurabh Bharti, Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional. This is my YouTube channel where I come and share my knowledge and experience with you all. So welcome to the next video on the custom fields without any code in Microsoft Dynamics 365. So today we are going to talk about this topic and we are going to understand that what are the options which we have, what are the different use cases which we have and what are the limitations which we have, how it is different from my customization or the technical uh, uh, field with when we add it to the code. Okay, so that is what we are going to discuss today. Now before I start talking about this custom field, let's see where this field is available and where do we see this field uh, uh, in, in D65. So now I am on the purchase order form and uh, let's say if I right click and personalize my purchase order header and if I select this add field option here, I will get all the list of fields which I could add on this form to personalize my view. But on top of that, you would have observed there is a new option here available which is the create new field. So today we are going to talk about this custom field that how we can utilize this, what are the business cases which we have and uh, what are the limitations which we have. So this is what we are going to discuss today. Okay, so the custom field in D65 uh, help us in capturing any additional information in form of field on any of the form which we have. And this field can be used using the personalization option which we have not only the personalization we can do, we can even add this field to our data entities so that we can use this for data management, import, export. Even we can use this in the Excel add-in for importing and exporting the data. Now this field has got couple of limitations as well. So we are going to talk about those limitations uh, later on in this video. First, we will see that how it works. Okay. So now let's understand what are the use cases which we have. So I can think of two use cases as of now. There can be many more. Uh, and, and if you know any 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 use case, please do comment. Uh, so one of the use cases, let's say you are migrating your data from legacy system during the cutover, uh, master data, or let's say opening balances. And there is one critical field which you want to capture in Microsoft Dynamics 365, which is not available in D65, but it was available in your legacy system, right? For example, uh, in the, during the fixed asset migration, you want to capture some additional information, the old fixed asset number or something, or the on the vendor master form, you want to capture some additional information, right? Or during the opening balance also, you want to capture something, okay? That is one thing. Uh, second use case is that uh, while after going live, uh, your business comes back and says that they want to have uh, additional information captured on the transaction so that they can perform some analysis on top of that. Okay. Now let's understand this by one example. So let's say USMF uh, is using Microsoft Dynamics 365 and they have the purchase orders uh, uh, implemented for in, in D365 and they have a requirement that the business wants to do the analysis of their purchase order based on the categories they have in uh, in their business now what are the possible categories like let's say they have a service po's they have a raw material po's they have consumables po's or they can have many more different types of categories so they want to capture these categories on the purchase order header so that when they analyze their data they can utilize this for their analysis okay so that is what we are going to discuss today with this example so let's go to the dynamics and see that how this can be added and uh, used so now i am on the same screen uh, which is my purchase order header and now i'm going to create a new field here and i will have the table name drop down available for me now this table name will display all the list of tables depending on the form from where you are navigating so right now I'm navigating from purchase order uh, form. So it is showing me all the related tables. So if I go to sales order form, it will show me the sales order related fields uh, or the tables available for me. So let's say I want to add this into my purchase order. Now the name of the field is let's say PO type I want to give. Then I have 
that what type of data I want to capture. So I can capture a text, number, decimal, date field, list, checkbox, if I want to have yes, no options, right? But right now in my use case, I want to capture the category. So that means it should be a drop down with couple of options available for the users, okay? So for that purpose, I will select the pick list here. And here I can give the name of the field, which will be appearing on the form. So I will select purchase, order category right and here I can even add the help text so that when someone is going and trying to understand what this field will do right so you can uh, add, add the help text so let's say add the uh, category of the purchase order or anything I mean I'm just adding something here so you can just uh, select whatever you feel now since I have selected the option drop down the pick list I need to define what are the different options or the categories which we can have it so let's say I want to have service POS uh, captured category whether it's a raw material uh, whether it's a consumables or anything else right so I can have categories I can define the order in which it should appear in the list when user is clicking on that drop down so I can define this and I can click on the save option here it will ask me that you are going to add a custom field are you sure you want to continue I'll say yes so this is going to add the field so this field is available purchase order category for me uh, I can click on update and now this is available on the header. Now one of the limitation here is that this field will not be available by default for all the users or for me even if I exit this form right now. So what I should do that I should create my personalized view and even I can share that view across all the uh, users uh, uh, who wants to have this access so that it is available for everyone. So let's say the type uh, PO is my view and I can default it and I save this. So that is one of the thing which we need to consider that uh, it will not be available by default. Either user has to manually add this field or we need to create a personalization view, personalized view and then share it across all the user, across all the legal entities. Now it is available. Now if I just refresh this browser, I can see that this field will be available for me to select the information. So if you see, uh, I have this field available and I can select this option. Now let's assume uh, this is available for my manual selection, but uh, USMF says that our users uh, generally use the Excel add-in for importing the purchase order header data. So if this field should be available in the Excel add-in as well for uh, the user to import the data. So for that, what we need to do is we need to navigate to system admin and under system admin, under the setups, you have the option of custom fields. Now you can click on the tables here and here all the tables, wherever you have used the custom field on any specific form will be available for you to select. Once you select this, it is going to display that which field is being selected, what is, what is the category or the name or the help text. If you want to modify anything, even if you want to add any additional option, you can add it here. And then in the bottom, you have the option of the data entities where this field can be added. So I have three different entities available for me. So I will just select all these three entities and click on the apply changes and this apply changes is going to add this field in the data entity so that I can use this in data import export uh, project or in the Excel add-in for me to importing this field for the purchase order header. Now, once this is done, uh, apply changes are done. Now this won't be available for me uh, in this state. So what I need to do is that one more step, I need to navigate to my data management, okay? and I need to uh, regenerate the mapping for that data entity. So I go to data management workspace. I have the option of data entities available here for me. 
and I'm going to filter the purchase order header data entity for me. So let's say this is my purchase order filter and I will find out this is my V2 entity. And now here I'm going to select this modify target mapping option. And here I need to click on the generate mapping option here. So if it is asking, do you want to do this? I will say yes. And once I do this, the field which I have created custom field and which is I have mapped to the data entity should be available for me for the data entity import export. So if I do this, so if you see PO type is available for me to uh, apply in this data entity. Once this is done, now this field is ready. We can select manually on the purchase order header field or we can go to the Excel add-in and then select this field or import or export this field. Okay, so let's navigate to the purchase order and let's try to use the Excel add-in. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to open this 39 purchase order. And if you see this is blank as of now, let's say if I want to use the open in Excel, op Excel option here. So I will select on this office option and this is going to give me the option purchase order header entity is available for me. I'm going to download and log into the Excel and then let's see that how we can import this value on this purchase order header. So now if you see, I have this open in the Excel and this all the data for 39 purchase order is available by default based on the template what we have. But the field which we have added is not available. So what we can do is we can go to the design option here and then uh, try to add this uh, field back on this particular template and then uh, publish it back to the dynamics. Now you would ask like if I have added a new custom field, I do I need to do this design option again and again. So no, Microsoft Dynamics uh, helps you to create your own uh, Excel templates which you can utilize and, and you can configure and utilize again and again. I have written a blog on that. I'm going to put that in the description. You can look uh, for that blog that how you can add your, create your own Excel template, okay? So now let's select this uh, uh, data entity here and click on edit. And now I'm going to select the field which I have added, which is the PO type, which is the PO type purchase order category. I'm going to add this update say yes here and then done and let's refresh it one more time now this field is going to be available in the end if i want to uh, create a sequence i can create the sequence now let's say if i want to enter the information here uh, which is the service po for me so i will select the service here and then i'm going to hit the publish option to publish this mark now this has been published. Now what we will do, we will navigate to the Microsoft Dynamics 365 purchase order header and see that whether this information is available or not. So now I'm on the Microsoft Dynamics form for 39 purchase order. Right now this is blank and I'm going to hit the refresh option here and that field should be available for me. So now if you see that field has been published here. So this is how you can add the information, uh, add the custom field map it to the data entity, generate your mappings and use it as part of your Excel in even the data import export project or you can edit manually. So now hope this helps you to understand the use case and the applicability of this custom field without the coding, without any technical help you can do using your personalization. But if you have an option of adding the field by, with, uh, by ourselves uh, as a functional consultant, then why do we choose to create certain fields technically, right? There must be some limitations on these options. So I try to look around the op, uh, limitations and I found a couple of them and there can be many more limitations. So whenever you are trying to use this field, Take the help of your technical consultant or the solution architect to understand the implications of this or the or the limitations which you are going to have. But couple of limitations for this field is that let's say we cannot use these fields for any business logic. So let's say if I have a PO category and if I want to write 
some logic in my purchase order or in my customization or somewhere right i cannot use this field for that i need to create my custom field using the technical development uh there are challenges uh of adding these fields to your existing report so let's say if you want to print this on your purchase order print the po confirmation i think there is a challenge you can't use this thing a manual personalization so it is not available by default so when you add this either user has to do the manually add to their screen or you need to uh, create a personalized view and then share it across all the users okay apart from that there can be certain other technical uh, limitations in the back end that how it is stored in the table or whether it is stored efficiently or not so i think there will be certain limitation which i am not aware and that is the reason i would recommend that before using this field consult with your technical architect technical consultant or the solution architect to see that if there are certain limitations if you use this field so that's it for uh, today's video hope you enjoyed uh this video and if you uh like this uh video i would request you to like share and then subscribe and also put in a comment box if you find any other use case of using this custom field or put your suggestions if you want me to record any video on a specific topic okay so that concludes today's video and i look forward to seeing you all in the next one and thank you for watching and see you next time thank you